I do, but for some reason I only see myself. No, <laughs> wait a minute. Now I see it says excellent connection. Now it's showing the poster. Yeah, I see I see also the poster. Oh, there is a lag on YouTube. There we go. We are online now. And there is a lag approximately 10 seconds between what we say and what the people see. So we are officially live. Now I see it says excellent connection. Now yeah. It's showing... And my phone is talking to me and it's in my own <laughs> voice. <laughs> and I can see your cat there. Yeah, you, you can. Oh, there, there she is. Yeah, she is always part, yeah. part of her name is Court. Name of your cat. Hmm? What's the name of your cat? Ko. 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 Yeah, in Russian, cat is koshka, and ko are the uh, first two letters. So in, the, in English, that would be ka. Yeah, <laughs> easy name for cat. I've seen <laughs> you have a cat too. In fact, you 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 have quite a lot of an, a, Animal. animals there, from what I can see. Yeah, two two cats and three dogs. Or wait a minute, looks like we are having a connection issue here. The, the guys are saying, Our, you're not moving. And I can ah, also I see. not see myself moving, but I think I know how to fix this. Just a second. Yeah. Yeah, you are not moving, but I am. Yeah, well, that's the, the most <laughs> important thing is that you're moving. Oh, no, we, we both should be moving. <laughs> but let me animate myself. Um, yeah, this should be working. I can already see what some questions are. Yeah, yeah looks, looks like, like three. One. one. You don't three, three, any four. concerts inside a plane, yeah? Inside, <laughs> inside a plane? A plane. <laughs> <laughs> That's a John Zambales. He, he, uh, I, I did uh, 10 concerts in a plane. And one in a rocket. No, no, no. <laughs> That's the only question I could see, so uh, let's see. When is the release from the next Imperial Age album? Just, Just a wee second, second I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to reconnect, reconnect myself. myself or... Yeah, now you are black. Yeah, actually gray, but... <laughs> <laughs> Almost there. Yeah, that's gonna be fixed. Yeah, I'm in fixing it second. right now. Can you hear me? Can can the guys hear me? Yeah, I think the guys can hear me, but they cannot see me. Okay, here, here I, I am. am. Here I am. Rock <laughs> you like a hurricane. Right. One, One two, two, three. three. Um, um, I decided to connect, to connect an, an iPhone, iPhone as, as a webcam. webcam. And it's an old iPhone, iPhone, so it's, it's giving, giving this, this shit. shit. <laughs> uh, if it doesn't work, I have a, a webcam in the laptop which I'm using, so that should be no problem. Now I can see you, but then you are... Yeah, you can see me through Skype all the time. The guys see me through a different webcam. No, no, so. on, on, the, on the other screen. But now you're gone again. Yeah, it's just gonna take one minute. Now it should work. Did him? Did him? Hello from Germany. Hello, Andreas Husman. Have you guys had breakfast? John has some good questions tonight. <laughs> I, I had breakfast about, let's see, 10 hours ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me approximately, me approximately the, same. the same. I had, I had to, to get, get up, up early today, today which, which is 10, 10 o'clock in the morning. morning. That's, That's early as hell for me. <laughs> is it is working, working now? now? Let's see, in, in about 10 seconds, you say there's a bit delay of 10 seconds, so... Yeah. yeah. I can see you moving now, yeah, you moved the...
But now it's frozen again. <laughs> mm. It, it worked, worked fine, fine yesterday. yesterday. That's what it, that's what it Okay, I'm, I'm, gonna I'm gonna use, use the inbuilt, inbuilt camera. camera. This, this is, is not secure. secure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm just, just gonna, gonna do. do. It's g the quality is gonna be shit, but there, there we are. You know, like this. Oh, okay. That's good enough. Man. That's good enough. Yeah. Well, I look like a white ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Let, um, yeah. That's the yeah. only problem, you know. But the rest. It's fine. Um, Greetings to South Africa, Dirk. Damn. Hello, Dublin. Dublin Metal Gatherings. From Warsaw. Greetings back to Warsaw. Let's see. Okay, I guess this is the best that can be done under these circumstances. So, um, yeah, let's go. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> so, when is the next album? Somebody asked you. Um, uh, on on December the first. So that's what we plan. Or uh, maybe er er earlier, if that's possible. Um, not so sure ab about it right now, but the plan is to have it around the first uh, of December, and then see how it goes. You know. Yeah, yeah. You have some uh, delay with the uh, with the current COVID situation, or everything is going as planned. No, actually, we are ha having quite quite a good time here. Are uh, because whether COVID or no COVID, we still work from home and, and nothing actually ha <laughs> happens. And what about you? Ha ha how's it going on Sicily? Yeah, as I, as I live in Italy, I, I have a hard time uh, uh, getting to the studio. So I, recorded, so I recorded all my parts at home. And uh, we, we still have to do a photo shoot. So we have to still figure out how to do that because. I heard from June on there's uh, some travel possible again, so I hope we can do the photo shoot then, but our album probably is going to have some uh, delay. It's the way it is. Sorry? I said it's the way it is. Uh, we have a bit of, of delay because of the, the situation. Even though I, I can do a lot from home, but the photo shoot we have to be all together and the video shoot. So we have to see about that, but uh, and also depends on the the tour if it's going to happen as planned or it's going to be moved to next year. So we we have to see some some things and uh, but we can only accept the situation as it is, right? And make the best out of it. <sighs> yeah. Well, <laughs> on the bright side, the city is empty. If you have the QR code. Then you you can travel around it. You, you know you you can have our uh, very fast traveling times and things like that, uh, oh, yeah. which is good. Um, also, but I I also understand that a lot of pe people have lost their jobs. They have lost their source sources of income and all that stuff. But all also yeah. we do everything from from home so behind me is our stu studio here which is right in my flat here and we do everything from here and actually we plan to record everything except drums from here mm -hmm. do you record ah. drums at home as well no no we record everything in the studio I just uh, I recorded my parts in, in my own home studio and uh, Simone recorded in a studio in Stuttgart because she also couldn't travel to uh, to the studio in, in Netherlands. So we fixed it this way. And uh, but hopefully in the future I can also record drums in in uh, in my own studio here. I still have to keep on uh, expanding my studio. I can record vocals now, 
and and guitars and stuff. But uh, but drums, uh, it's not it's not uh, uh, my room is not ready for that yet. So still quite some work to do. And when is your album coming out approximately? Normally it would be September October, but it it can be that it's uh, going to be a bit later due to the current situation. Yeah. And what about Mayan? Uh, we we started writing uh, some new material, and uh, also hopefully we can release with Mayan uh, somewhere uh, next year or or 2022 a new album. Uh, unfortunately, we had to move our our anniversary show in October mm -hmm. because uh, sure. we have quite some guests uh, coming in, and they don't know if they can fly by then. And we had also we have some fans from America. And, and South America, who, who would really like to uh, join for that show, but everything is uncertain if they can travel to Euro by then or not. And our prime minister in the Netherlands, he says that everything will only be normal with concerts uh, when there is a vaccine. So uh, I don't think in October there will be a vaccine. So uh, I, we thought it's better to not take any risk with the show and just move it to, to 2021 because yeah, with all these uncertainties, you we want to give the show to everybody and not just to a few people that can stand one and a half meter from each other in a little club. <laughs> that uh, yeah, it's, it's not even a little club, but when people have to stand one and a half meter from each other, it's it becomes a little club. <laughs> so wait a minute. So the Dutch government actually says that there, there's going to be no concerts. Well, larger than I don't know how. Large bands, yeah, yeah, big event. I don't know what they mean with big events. Until they have a vaccine, holy crap. Yeah. And will you? Will there be mandatory vaccination to attend those shows? Uh, I haven't heard anything about that yet, but I wouldn't be surprised. Because they're, they're not really saying it out loud yet, but if they already start saying about everything will only be normal as soon as there is a vaccine, that means that you have to take the vaccine to be able to... Uh, live the normal circumstances, I guess, but they, they didn't say it like this yet, but uh, I'm prepared for, for everything. That's actually one of my worst fears in these circumstances that we that 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 they will have this and especially for you know for foreigners when you need a visa that they will ask for this immunization passport and unless you have injected that <laughs> into yourself yeah. you would not be able to lead a social life you know, this is like yeah it's it's uh, it's a bit a scary thought but uh, i i'm i'm having a double thoughts on that uh, i i had a lot of vaccinations myself in my life and uh, like yellow fever and and all that kind of stuff so i i i'm not an actually anti-vaccination guy but uh i i need to know for sure the, the safety of it and and for example, flu vaccinations I never take because I think it's better to boost your immune system than take an, uh, a flu vaccination. In my case, uh, everybody has to decide that for themselves, of course. But as, as long as the, the COVID vaccine, uh, that I don't know 100% if that's a, if that's a safe vaccination, I'm, I'm not really getting very excited about taking that. Just the science has to first be 100% uh, solid rock proof that it uh, that's a good vaccine, and uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm really a, a guy who who likes science, but I also don't uh, automatically trust everything that that get presented to me. So I do some 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 investigation and. And I go also with my gut feeling when, when my intuition says it's good, I, I go for it. And when my intuition says uh, don't do it, then I, I, I don't. And what does your intuition say about obligatory va vaccinations when they don't say it's, you know, it's for everybody, you're, cho you're free to choose, when they say everybody should get it, otherwise no, uh, ad no admittance to work, no admittance for your children to school and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always have a little bit problems with uh, with with people telling me what to do. That I've already since oh, since a kid. I totally I'm like, agree. With I, that. I always had authority problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I, I I simply cannot stand it. So unless I'm the authority, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I cannot work for a boss, for example, because 
I have I have things like I like doing things my own way, and when I, I have the feeling my way is, is is the best way, I I have hard times following orders to do it in a less good way. <laughs> I can absolutely feel you one million percent. I'm exactly the same. I mean, I've always had problems with with authority. I worked on a regular job for one and a half months in my life and I got fired and, I, and that was in the biggest private bank of Russian Alpha Bank and, I, and, and it was abs absolutely impossible you know and never ever ever since then I have had a boss never because yeah it, I, I also told myself I will never uh, work for a boss so in, in working of working with with band guys it's, it's like on an equal ground and that I love and then of course you have discussions sometimes and you cannot always be right so sometimes you you get what you want sometimes uh, people say hey this is better and okay that's also fine but that's something completely different but indeed when there's a boss who tells you this is the way and and there's no room for your own uh, freedom and and your own creativity that I, I cannot uh, I cannot stand I when I did my uh, my graduation uh, paper and uh, on the university I also had to do everything the way they wanted and sometimes I had some own ideas and there was not much space for that uh, I, I got through but it's not really I don't get satisfaction out of it you know what when I graduated um, I wanted to write my diploma work about well, my diploma work was about Russian and Tibetan relationships at the yeah. end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century, the exploration of Tibet by the Russian Empire. And yeah. I was uh, trying to understand... When I came to my teacher, my initial proposal was that I'm interested in why was the Russian Empire, the British Empire, and the Chinese and the German Empire, everybody so interested in Tibet, where at that time there were no mineral resources, they haven't they hadn't discovered gold yet, and it's yes. extremely difficult to move, and, and there is absolutely no economic or military reason in, you know to go there, but all the world powers they were really, really in, interested in it. And you know what are uh, the establishment, what, well, what, what my teacher said, she said, I'm sorry, but the commission will not approve that. And Why not? You, no reason. And you should uh, rename your diploma work as Russian explorers of Tibet. So instead of searching why, what was everybody searching for in there, I just had, you know, to study how Przewalski, Kozlov, the, these guys, how they organized their expeditions, where they went, etc. And since then, I've been working with doctors for some years, because until the band became uh, possible to live from, you know, I worked as an interpreter from English into in Russian, and, and I worked for doctors. And I can tell you that medicine is working absolutely the same way. So yeah. there is this peer-to-peer -peer review, which actually means direct censorship. Just, yeah, just yeah, a thought. Yeah, you know? yeah that, that's, why, that's one of the reasons why I, I'm not so fond of, about many kinds of medicines. Medicines in general, when it's working well for sick people, is a great thing. So I won't deny that. But there's a lot of medicine around that is not really necessary to take, but they they promote it that way that many people take it, and it has a lot, a lot of side effects, with, which will make people take other medicines. So I always go for the, the, the natural stuff. So if, if I have a problem, I always search first for natural stuff. And in general, I, I, I don't need medicines, luckily, uh, at all. Uh, I'm, I'm luckily a healthy guy, and uh, but if, if for whatever reason in the future I need medicines, I would first look for, do my own uh, uh, investigation online and, and, and talk to, to people. I have some, some friends who are doctors. And then you get sometimes a different kind of opinion than if you oh, go yeah. to a, oh, yeah. a doctor, yeah. Luckily, when I was living in the Netherlands, my doctor was, was already quite uh, open-minded into uh, natural uh, medicines. And because if we like it or not, there's many doctors, they get some extra money if they promote certain me medicines. But my doctor was totally not, not like that. That's cool. He, 
he even said to me, do some meditation and mindfulness, that stuff really works. And so I was really surprised that my doctor was advising me actually on this kind of things, because there's many doctors who are a bit skeptical to, towards meditation and, and everything. But I, that, that doctor of mine, now it's, uh, he's, he's, he's with, with his pension, so he, he left. And, uh, but he, he was a good guy. He's still a good guy. <laughs> well, you're very, very lucky with, with a doctor. Actually, here in Russia, herbal medicine is official. And also acupuncture is official. It's, yeah. It's called needle reflexotherapy here. So, yeah, I never had it, but but uh, I I heard people benefiting from it. Oh, so absolutely. I guess. It, yeah. If you look at the map of the Taoist meridians, it mostly corresponds with actually how the nervous system is organized. So, our yeah. these things are really closely interrelated. By by the way, well, there is at least one doctor whom I know who is also into a lot of, you know, occult, esoteric, bioenergetic stuff. That's Jane, our singer. She's actually a doctor by education, but <laughs> she, she's playing metal the last 10 years. But <laughs> so when you're on the road and you have a problem, you, you're lucky too. <laughs> oh, yeah, that actually helped a lot when, when people yeah. get ill on tour. Having yes. a doctor is like really the only problem is that her specialization is a is she she she's a gynecologist so it doesn't always help you. Oh, that doesn't help you. <laughs> yeah, but you know ha having a scientific mind. Speaking about natural remedies, when I was a little kid, about mm -hmm. you know three years old, my parents made me every morning go to to the bathroom take a tub of cold water and pour it onto ah. my head, screaming in Russian, it's called ura, 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 холодная вода. If there are any Russians, <laughs> they will understand. That means hooray, 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 cold water, you know? Yeah. And when I was a tiny baby, they put me into a, into a small sleeping bag in, at winter in Moscow, like in minus Outside. 15, and they put me sleeping on the balcony, in, you know. <laughs> so, and you're still alive, so it, it <laughs> but uh, these, these kind of things, I, I'm really into it, so I probably heard it already. I, I'm, I really love taking uh, cold showers, ice, ice baths, and, and that kind of stuff. And uh, when I was a kid, I, my father always took me to the sauna. That's why where I started really liking to take the, the cold baths because uh, it, in the sauna you cannot take a hot sauna without the coldness. Some people do only the, the hot stuff, but then you, <laughs> you you miss you miss the experience. You miss because... the point. You have to jump into <laughs> into here and in Finland. Actually, I think you should come when this whole thing thing is over. You you should come here in January. Yeah. When it's mine and it's 20, because some people who are into this thing, they have a hobby, you know, they break a hole in the ice yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah, in a lake or in the river and they dive in. You would love that, I'm sure. Yeah, I would do it. I would do it. I don't know how long I'm able to stay in the water, but uh, I would do it, definitely. Well, I, <laughs> I had my cold shower today <laughs> and yesterday too. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I thought you were but having these ice baths, no? Yeah, but I'm actually building in my garden uh, an own uh, pond that I can do more easily the ice bath because I have kind of a, a top and uh, this, sitting in there it's pretty uncomfortable because it's it's rather too small and then my toes start really hurting and when I move then first of all they are already pretty frozen but then I, they are in a certain position that when I move them it really hurts a lot. So I have to build a new one, and then it will be more uh, of a relaxing experience. Because once you're in the ice, you don't feel the coldness. It, it's, it's, you start feeling even yeah, at ease, and you feel a sort of warmth, as crazy as it might sound. It's just when you get out, you, you get the kick of the coldness. And when you stay too long, you, you get, uh, you, your body starts really shaking until you get at, at your, your right uh, amount of... Uh, uh, degrees Celsius, but you have to make it uh, gradually uh, and and enlarge, or you say, uh, uh, and lengthen your stay in the bath. Now I can do uh, like 12, 13 minutes without any problems. Recently I stayed 20 minutes, and then I was shaking half an hour 
to get more of my game. Wow. That holy, was a bit too, too holy much, cow, uh, that's a lot. I always get a little bit overexcited with these things, <laughs> so I want to, to do it too quickly, too fast, and too much. But uh, that's, that's the story of my life. <laughs> So now I went back a step and I, I do like 12 minutes now and next time 30 minutes. So I do it now step by step. Wow. Actually, the coldest water I've been in, speaking of Tibet, was on Lake Manasarovar. That's 5,000 meters above sea level. I think yeah. the water was something around plus one, maybe zero. But when you go into there, you can't breathe. I yeah. tried s swimming around in there, but I just, just remember. But the yeah. sensation I remember actually was feeling very hot. Not yeah, very, yeah. not That's cold, but really hot. It like it burns you. Yeah. The body body feels like it's under attack, so it 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 creates a feeling of of warmth. And uh, uh, the more you train it, the, the more the longer you can endure. But, uh, for example, when people go in there untrained, they should not stay too long because then at a certain point the body temperature goes drops uh, fast and then uh, it can get at a certain point dangerous. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's really great how you can make the body adapt to it. And, and uh, I would suggest it to everybody. In the beginning, it's terrible taking a cold shower. But after you get slowly used to it, it starts, you start desiring it. <laughs> yeah. If I don't take a cold shower, I don't feel woken up, if you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah. I don't feel, you know, having enough energy for for the day or... Yes, yeah, I know the feeling, yeah. When I need energy or when, for example, before this, this Skype session, because I worked in the garden the whole day, I, I started feeling uh, tired. But then I took my cold shower, poof, energetic, oh, so energized. So you do it... It during the day as well. Yeah, whenever you're, I feel like you're crazy, I, I, I take... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the story of my life. Two people always say that I'm crazy. What, whatever I do, <laughs> people say you always I'm, go I'm, over the top. You know. Yeah, because also I like also to to test my body when it's it's hot. So when it was one time here in Sicily, it gets up to 50 degrees. So one time it was 45 degrees, and I went for a cycling trip. And uh, because to, I wanted to, to see how the body would react on me cycling in such temperatures. But my, my drinks went so fast, I kept on drinking. So halfway the round, I was already out of drinks. So I had to stop at a little, uh, yeah, such a little basin where, where they have water for the sheep. And I just drank water from there. It was not the best water in the world, <laughs> probably. But I, was, I was so thirsty, uh, thirsty I needed water. <laughs> And I survived. So that's also what I think when, when you take some, some sometimes some, some bacteries that are harmful, but when you, you have just enough of it and in, get inside, it, it's actually good for you because it, it uh, makes your immune system stronger. So I always, when I hear par parents, they are taking their babies away from all the dirt and everything, I, I don't think it's a good thing because they need to get in touch with, with bacteria bacteria and, and dirt to, to get this uh, certain amount of uh, immune system. Like the, the, your parents put you outside in that coldness that, that, that boosts your immune system. And especially as for kids, it's very important. Actually, here in the Soviet Union, approximately maybe 50 or 60 years ago, there was this movement that, you know, the baby should be kept sterile. But then very, very quickly, it turned out that they started to ha having basically Im immuno, well, a slight form of immunodeficiency, and then yeah. uh, they actually realized that our the baby should not be kept sterile. That the, yeah. that yeah. that that what I'm saying is that what you what you you're saying has scientific proof, you, you know, and it's so people who are you know sh shielding their children from uh, the outside world they just make sure that when the outside world actually gets to their children it's it's going to be very e easy for all the pathogens to come in you know so yeah and, and then these kind of parents they start feeding all these medicines to their kids and then they are in this vicious circle of, of medicines 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 and then later on when they get to age 
they get uh, they get sick all the time because they are so their body is so depending on medicines, and that's all, always when I when my friends get a baby, I always try to uh, talk them into not raising them too protected because they they need a certain amount of, of natural resistance. They need to build it, otherwise they are they're screwed later on. I stopped trying actually to to change people's minds. Well, we we spoke we spoke about that. <laughs> they have to do whatever they want in, in the end themselves, but uh, but often they don't know really what to do, and then this this kind of advice can can help them. Yeah, you're when, right. When, when people made up their mind already and they say no, no, I do it my way. Fine, fine, I respect that. It's, it's their kid, and they they have to decide, of course. But when they are open to it, and I discuss with them what what I what I think is. The best way, because I see that happening to, to kids there who later on get sick all the time. And, and uh, I'm really a, a guy that, that really loves the, the natural immune system of the body. The body can uh, cure so many diseases by itself, but, but people have forgotten that. Absolutely. Back in the days, they, 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 did it all, they did it all the time, civilizations back in the days, they cured themselves. But nowadays, it's people seem to be forgotten about that. So I try to go back into that state of of how you build your own resistance. And uh, I don't know if it works against every everything in life. So when 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 I, for example, would get this COVID nineteen, uh, I think personally I can handle it better than than maybe other people. But that's a feeling I have. That's that has no scientific basis yet because there's not enough. Uh, uh, proof of that yet, but I think as as better as your immune system, the better you can deal even with with. But that's an intuition, intuitive uh, feeling. No, that's so. actually a very scientific fact. <laughs> that uh... I, I think later it's going to be a scientific fact that it helps against COVID. But at this point, it's just not uh, proven yet, so I cannot say it as a scientific fact. But I yeah. worked as an interpreter for a woman who used to be the, um, the second main child doctor of entire Russia, and she was in charge of all the child vaccinations in Russia and yeah. in the Ministry of Health here. And, and by specialization, she's an allergologi allergologist immunologist. And one of the things she told me, so that's what I'm saying. I'm not an anti-vaccination person. I, I, I have had a lot of vaccines myself, but what I don't like yeah, is when yeah. they make me do something. That's a red flag, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I, I, I'm with you on that. But, yeah. but that's a lyrical thing. What she told me is that basically how the immune system works, nobody really knows. So that's one of the white spots of medical science. Mm -hmm. uh, but we know two things for sure you know we know that first of all the cold procedures which are connected to cold they boost the immune system that's one thing yeah and second yeah. thing physical exercise boosts the immune system because yeah. our if you look at the mortality rates in developed countries it's going to be 60 percent die from heart mm -hmm. 15 to 20 die from cancer and the rest yeah. die from all the other causes imaginable <laughs> so when i was th thinking about this how do i avoid at least the first two <laughs> you know the, <laughs> the only thing i can think about is that if you want to avoid the biggest killer heart disease you, you should train you should do cardio exercise which I can see you're you're doing a lot <laughs> with biking and, and and everything, you know. And if you want, <laughs> and if you want to avoid, oh, I've just seen your your pictures in the snow on the bikes. I thought, okay, I must look into that <laughs> seriously. And the the second thing, cancer is also not studied properly. But what is well known is that every twenty minutes, a cancerous cell appears in every organism. But the part yeah. of the immune system, the T lymphocytes, the T killer cells, they are there to kill off these cancer cells. And if yeah. you look at all the modern approaches to treating cancer, they are basically all designed, well, the, the new ones, they are designed to actually make the immune system tackle the tumor. So it's 
again, we're coming back to the immune system. You know? Yes, yes, it's, it's like a circle and we're coming back to the beginning. Yeah. But I think we, we have all this knowledge and that's, we've made great improvement. It, it's really great that now this, this gets added to all what we know already because this is crucial information. And, and I really with you uh, on that, that, that cancer can be maybe not all forms. I don't know enough about that. But I know that some some forms of cancer that people could we are able to heal themselves without any chemotherapy, without any this of this other things that destroyed the bodies. They were able to. I have a friend actually who, who refused all the chemotherapy and did it by herself. Wow! And yeah, I don't know if I would be able to to believe so much in myself to take that risk. You only know when it happens to yourself, but uh, yeah, me, but that is me possible. neither. Think about that. You have to believe it one hundred percent that you can do it. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Exactly. That's the one of the key principles of magic that you have to have. That you know, f faith is used as an instrument. If you believe something, you can do it. If you don't, you don't. If you, it's like moving your hand. You know, if you don't believe that you can move your hand, you won't even try. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but that's the same when, when people, for example, pray to God and they say, "Please, God, give me this or this and that." I always think that doesn't work because if you ask God to give something to you in the future, that means you you, you are saying to God you don't have it, and and you asking in a way that you will not have it in the future. You have to think like in a way that if you really want something, you have to to think like that you have that already. Then you make it make it work, and that's that's a that's a really total complete uh, mind shift of a way of, of thinking. For example, me in my life, uh, all, people always tell me all the time, "Oh, you're so lucky! You're so lucky because you got all these things." Oh, I, I always say, oh, I, I I relate to that so much. First of all, they hate you. They say that you're a complete jerk. But when you achieve something, you say, "Oh, you were lucky." Yeah. 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 But uh, of course, there's always some. You need you need some luck. But the thing is, you you influence the luck because if you really want to 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 do to achieve something, it's for the grasp. You yeah. I always believed one hundred percent in what my uh, capacities were, and I followed my heart. So when my intuition said, against all odds, against all advices of people, that I should do it, I did it. And people said always, you're crazy. Even about that, oh, you, with music, you cannot make a penny. You, you have to, to do something in, in psychology. You have, you have yeah. a degree. Or I had exactly I the same shit. Yeah. <laughs> From everybody around me except Jane. Everybody, my parents, her parents, you know, all the friends. You will never heavy metal. What? You're not metallic. You know, you're not epic. You know, you're not Nightwish. That's what they were telling me. <laughs> I'm actually so fucking glad to hear this f from, you know, just not feeling al yeah. alone it, it is important because, yeah, what you say, I completely, I, I'm ready to sign every word. And I've been telling since, since, since I was a teenager, I've been telling pe people, you know, if you want to be somebody, act as if you are that person in an adequate way, yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, there is that's the only way. You know, because otherwise you don't believe it yourself already that you, you, you're going to do that. Yeah. If you 100% believe in what you do, you, you're doing the wrong thing because then you don't believe in yourself. There's so many people, they do just something and they say to you, I, I believe it, it's my dream, but it, they don't even believe themselves. So if you really believe in yourself and you really believe you're, you're doing what you love doing, then, then it's going to happen. And, and otherwise, you're doing something that you don't really believe you will absolutely. succeed. I absolutely agree with that. Whenever somebody asks me, what do you want to tell people? I always say, do what you really enjoy doing, despite the odds, despite the, the yes. social pressure. Despite not ha having money to do it, despite your yeah. everybody around you saying you should not do it, because if you do not do this, the negative consequences will be much worse than er th than all of that put together. Because exactly. on your deathbed, you will think, okay, and what was the point of my life? You know, doing s <laughs> what somebody else wanted from me. That's the first point, and and the second point is. 
If there is a competition, you cannot compete against somebody who loves his job because that person is going to work off, yeah. off hours. That person is going to put all of himself into that. And if you, you dislike your job, you're absolutely useless. That person will be running circles around you. So, and there you something. You said the word competition, and uh, we spoke about oh, it yes. briefly before already. That, that's a big thing where I agree with you on. Uh, the, 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 the whole capitalistic system is basically built on, on competition. And we have all seen what that brought us. It, it, uh, of course, it, uh, we have made some, some progress and, and scientifically and, 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 and tools that we have. But I think we could have made even more progress if we had worked already much more to, together. Because now we, we are in a situation where a, a little amount of people basically own more than half of the money of the world. What, what, what do these people need all the money for in the first place? <laughs> but they have now so much money, and we all know that when you have money, you basically have also the control. So now, without v voting for them, a, a very small amount of people have the control on the whole world, and that's a very un unhealthy situation. And these people that are in that position became, uh, yeah, got to this position because they, they have in this system of competition, they were the most reckless, so they got the most rich. Not all of them, of course, but most of them, because if you want to make it to the top in this competition system, you have to use your elbows, you have to use tricks, you have to cheat, you have to uh, get jobs from others. You have to be a, a true asshole, otherwise others make it and they, they get the jobs. So I think that that whole system, we have to get rid of it and we have to go back to a cooperative system where people really work together and, and be there for each other because now these, these people who make all the money, they are just being there for themselves. And, and there's enough food for, to feed everybody in the world, but it doesn't go, it can't go to the right places. So something has to really change here and I think this now that there is this now a crisis is the perfect opportunity to realize this big change to go back back to working together uh, spreading more uh, equally and of course it, it's no problem that some people have more money than others uh, when when people are smart creative fine they deserve it but but now it's really out of proportion it, it completely makes no sense anymore um, do you mean just the metal community or you're talking about a global socialistic revolution? First of all, I was talking about the business side, but if you talk about the metal community, there was also, uh, yeah, always people say metal, one big family, but that's just one side of the story. It's basically a family with, with the fans. They are one big family with us, but between bands, there are still competition going on. And not with every band. There are some bands, they, we have been on tour with many bands, and some bands that, that goes very well along and you help each other. But with some other bands, you feel like this competition. And it's really, I don't like this feeling, but we have been on tour with bands that you felt all the time that you were in competition with that band. That band was all the time trying to, to be better than us, uh, giving us uh, uh, limitations. Every day, different limitations in life, sound-wise, uh, cutting the set, whatever. And these kind of things I really dislike. Uh, I think in, also in the metal, working together is perfect. There's enough space for, for, for all these bands in this genre that, that, that doesn't need to be a uh, nasty competition. Uh, also this, working together and everybody benefits from it. I agree 100%. Are, I've actually spoken today, uh, right before our conversation with Christopher from Therian about this, and he let me quote a message which, which, we, which he sent me, an SMS. I'll just quote what he writes, okay, because this resonates completely to what you're saying and to what I wanted to say. So. Well, he wrote a very smart man, by the way. I spoke to him once also at a concert we did together. And he is very much into also uh, some occult uh, topics. And I, I think I could have talked to him eight hours in a, in a row. But uh, yeah, there's not enough time for that. But he's a very smart and kind man. That's how we initially 
that's how we initially got to know each other with concerning the magic and, and the occult thing, things because he had an order of his own. But that's a completely different story. Uh, right, yeah. I'm trying to find his message here amongst all the COVID talk. <laughs> uh, he likes writing big me messages. Uh, but, but I really want to quote this because um, it's really important, I feel. So just give me. Yeah, yeah. I'd look for it, and uh, in the meantime, I can already see if what people. Oh yeah. Have questions, because we can also use some time to answer the questions. Say hello to the dog. That you always have competition in business. Somebody writes. Yeah, in in a in this system, you you have. Let's see what where there are the questions. I think people stopped asking questions because we were just talking uh, with each other. But uh, <laughs> there must be some questions here and there. How did you get your music? How did you get? I don't. I don't get the question. Me, me neither. How did you get your music? I don't understand that too. Um, let's see. People, you can ask que us questions yeah, and then... Yeah, uh, if you have them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's see. The IA Internet concert was a success. Mark, are you already looking into the Epic and Mayan? Rietveld Theater in Delft is offering facilities for artists. Yeah, somebody says to do uh, this this uh, internet concerts, but uh, as long as I cannot travel, I'm I'm really literally stuck here at home. There are worse places to get stuck, I must say. I'm I'm really love to be at home, but uh, at a certain point when uh, the borders get open, and I heard it's going to be third of June in in Italy, but then still there have to be also flights available. I don't know. I saw Ryanair starts flying at uh, in August. And even though Ryanair is, is a budget company, I fly a lot with Ryanair because it has a direct connection. Sicily, Netherlands, clo pretty close to my parents' place, so I, I often fly with that company. Can we expect any guest vocalists on the new albums? On ours, we have uh, some, some guests coming up. I cannot reveal yet, but uh, one, one singer has some... Uh, some Arabian influences. <laughs> Somebody writes me if I write all the Epica lyrics, I share them with Simon. I do 50-50. Who writes uh, in your band the lyrics? Oh, it's me. <laughs> you write all of them? Yeah, all of them. Nice. A lot of work? Yeah, but it, it's important <laughs> because I think that the idea is what actually manifests in self and materializes the whole thing, what, what gives it substance. So in the, in the, the informational part is the most important one. I cannot find the direct quote, I don't know why, uh, but I can give you the... Um, it's just a huge conversation, I don't want to waste time, it's like pages and pages, but what, what he said was, I told yeah. him what we were talking about, the other day yeah. and he said i always had this idea like the the man of war brothers in metal attitude and um he that or the idea that and it's also my thought you know that the idea of competition between metal bands is absolutely st stupid because um the bigger one band gets the bigger all the other gets. I'm not quoting di di directly, but I am uh, yeah. re retransmitting. And he says that he's always been asked since 1995 about his um, about what he thinks of Nightwish, and people always expect him to say something bad, you know. But he he never says anything bad. He he actually says this the same as I told you that that the bigger Nightwish is. The, the bigger you are 
and the bigger we are and the bigger are all the other symphonic metal bands and um and but that's a funny thing because i i recently uh, wrote about a new album uh, human versus nature or human nature um, i wrote uh, on my facebook that i really love the album and uh, there was some people saying uh, like uh, did nuclear blast ask you to post that <laughs> and i was like no i really love the album myself if nuclear, nuclear blast would ask me to promote nitrogen and i wouldn't like the album i would i would not even do it because for me it's very important when i say i like something i do like it and when people hear that and they buy an album because they they heard that i like it i want them to have it for the right reasons if I would be telling around that I like all these albums that I actually don't like, <laughs> for me that would, would feel like crazy. complete nonsense. It's, so. it's crazy. Well, that's all I wanted to, to say how that. Does it take, how many tickles does it take to tickle an octopus? So <laughs> that's a good <laughs> question. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you know, in hip hop, for example, in rap, they have this sense of community. They have this sense that, you know, I scratch your back and you scratch mine. And they have yeah. these collabs, cooperations, etc. Metal seems to be much more individualistic and seems to be much more egoistic in this sense. And I think that um, if that trend could be changed, you know, if bands... Because I, I've been... For, for example, told many times by many people, you know, people who I was like learning from in the business, for example, or whom I thought would become my managers or they wanted to become. They, one of them was telling me, you know, you should compete with, with the bands. You know, when you go on tour uh, as a support band, you should not make friends with a headliner. You should make friends with the crew and with the tour manager, because you are competing with the headliner, but you will see the crew and the tour ma manager on, you know, on all, all the other shows. And I go, oh my God, this looks like, you know, like putting 10 spiders in one small jar, you know, and they start yeah. biting each other. That's not the attitude to run things forward. You know, I, I always huh. believed in this American win-win approach, you know, that... If, if we want to have something, let's organize it in such a way that everybody benefits. It's, it's always better. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that. Uh, and, I, and I also know these stories with some bands that you had to get along with the tour manager. I can, I can tell a story. I, I don't tell which band it was, but we were on tour. And the band guys, they were really nice guys. We had a great time, but the, the crew, their crew was, was really, they were such assholes. And there was one day that they had a lot of problems, this crew with, with uh, uh, the sound check. And, and we, we didn't get time for a sound check anymore. Zero minutes, nothing. But they promised us that we would be able to do a full set. But then the, there was the first support I played. Then it was our turn. And we played before the headliner. And there were so many problems still. And uh, it, it didn't work. We, we had to start 15 minutes later. Still, the tour manager told us, you can do the whole uh, set. Then we were playing uh, for 15 minutes. And then he chopped and, you off. Let me yeah, but the tour manager yeah. was gone. But then there was this crew guy. He said, you have to get off stage. Your time is over. I yeah. said, yeah, but we can, yeah. we can still play. But then um, he, he kept insisting, you have to leave. But there was also a lot of people that came for us. And I, I said, yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, we, we have to leave. Uh, this guy doesn't want us to keep playing. I was so pissed off. Uh, I... Usually I get calm, but when I feel so that's so unfair, we got the, the promise we could do the full set, but this jerk was uh, kicking us off stage. So I said, this guy uh, makes us leave. The whole crowd was to him, boo, fucker, boo. <laughs> and from there on, we did the whole tour. We did never got a sound check again. This guy was so pissed about that. He quit. He, he did cut all our sound checks. <laughs> these these crew guys can sometimes be bigger rock stars than the band. Usually, <laughs> often they, they are guys that are. Luckily, there's also many great crew guys, but there are some real jerks because there's a saying that some crew people they are failed musicians, and some of them they act like that. Oh, and I... when you run a, a jerk like that, he can really make your tour life miserable. 
I, I could speak for hours on that topic, but I won't because it's a negative topic and I like to be positive. Yeah, yeah, this, this is just a, a nice <laughs> ranting topic. <laughs> Let's go to some positive questions. Uh, yeah. Somebody asked me, for example, if I got stuck on holidays in Italy, but I live in Italy, so I had to clarify that. And let's see, question, the bands want concert tour Germany. Yeah, always Germany is a great... Uh, uh. Imperial Age, let's see, was support act in 2030 for Epica. Did you both stay in contact because of that concert, somebody asked? Uh, we played, we supported you, we played as a support act for you. In 2013, in May 2013, that was actually exactly seven years ago. And by the way, your tour manager kicked us off stage before we finished our last song. Yeah, we don't work with that tour manager anymore. <laughs> yeah, we were fine. He was. We were fine with that. We just said okay. <laughs> but that, but that was, I think, our first ever support show, and it went terrible as fuck because there was a guy. In the speaking, but I remember you were a bit angry about that. Yeah, speaking of the crew, there was a guy in the local crew who absolutely he's still a huge hater of the band and of myself personally, and he's of course a fail a failed musician, as a matter of fact. But still, are uh, that guy when we when we were setting up the the gear, he deliberately, as it turned out late later, did didn't patch one of the channels, and us and our sound engineer we spent all our sound check trying to patch that fucking channel you know and then it turned out that it was there all the time and then during the set the laptop with all the playback fell and the firewire got disconnected <laughs> and <laughs> and the head of the last song your tour manager came out and said guys fuck off and uh, and that was what we did but luckily, and then, and then the story is that that somebody did shit in our dressing room. That was that was not us, <laughs> because that's the funny. That's the that funny. was not us, <laughs> because by the time we had enough exper experience in the industry just to understand, that's how it goes, you know. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So so it was not you guys that. Uh... <laughs> We'd, well, I cannot be responsible for all my musicians, but I can t be responsible for myself and for Jane. The reason I cannot be responsible for the other there is that of everybody who played with us, then we we don't work with anybody since then. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I. <laughs> but the guy of ministry, the guy of ministry, he really admits. Uh, for example, he shit on the desk of the record company. He was pissed at the, the record company. <laughs> he went into the boss office and he, he, he took a dump on the, his, his desk. <laughs> uh, no, that's not our methods. <laughs> no, but it was in the toilet. That was not on the floor. But <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> we never found out who did that's it. <laughs> not, that's not our methods. But Yeah, but I know that shit happens with tour managers. That shit happens. Yeah, yeah no, I can tell you that our, since we had since we started playing headliner shows ourselves we also had conflicts w w with support bands for 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 example our latest eu tour when we were the headliners and there were a lot, a lot of supports they were similar conflicts so you know things happen we of course try yeah. to, to to be as positive but in every conflict there are two sides and one side says you're inadequate and the other side side says no y y you are but in rea in reality they are both you know always in in any situation yeah, yeah. so um it, it shit happens like that you know <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> Sometimes in, it happens in unexpected places, you know. Yeah, ten tickles it takes to for ticks to tickle the the, the ah. octopus. <laughs> Said the guy who just gave gave us two dollars. So I owe you at least one dollar. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. What are any other questions? Let's see. Any advice for young bands? Woo. My advice is always the same. I say, don't take advice. Huh. Do it your own way. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Be 
because uh, the, the, it's always changing the, the music uh, world and, and the way we did it, it already doesn't work nowadays anymore. So I always say to young bands, don't listen to me. Find a way to, to do something different than all the others do and, and make yourself visible in whatever way. But I always joke that uh, I was the, one of the inventors of the spam mail when there was uh, the first internet pages with bands came, came up and uh, I collected all the, the email addresses from, from Trail of Tears, uh, where in the guest book. I collected all these email addresses and wrote a one big mass email about my first band after forever. Mark, I, I, I seriously book. love you. I didn't expect, I'll, I'll tell you why. Yesterday, I declined a record deal from one of the top three uh, labels in metal. I cannot say the name just out of the respect for, for these guys because they have a lot, a lot of bands whom I really love and listen to and everybody here included. But that would have not been possible if we hadn't had our fans on our mailing list. We have now uh -huh. almost 20,000 people on our mailing list and this direct connection with our fans enables us to, to do the music, you know, full time, live from it, hire other people, you know, like people who do the shops and, and, and a manager and, and all that, and still sit here and talk to you without a record label because, so that was my advice to young bands, get a mailing list. Get a, ma a mailing list and learn yeah. internet so, marketing, learn Facebook ads, learn funnel marketing. Because if you have good music, you need to market it. If you don't have good music, nothing will help you. But if, if you have good music, you need to learn marketing. That's the 21st yes. century, you know? Yeah, yeah, but don't send the spam mail anymore. Let people themselves give you, give you their email address. Yeah, because sure. I, was, no, no. I, was I don't mean spamming. That. No, no, no. Now you cannot do that anymore. That's why I say people have to find their own way. Ah. When I was back in the days, the first spam mail, I, I never heard about spam mail at that time. So I, I created it myself. I sent one big mass mail and people were uh, emailing me back. Thank you for the information. And they were happy. But then came all these, these, these big spam companies. And since then, you could never do that again because we, people would get pissed if you send them a mail like that. But that was a, a, a nice thing to invent at that time. Nobody did it yet. So I always say to people, find something that nobody did yet and then <laughs> go with it. No, what we, what we do, we offer them seven free songs in return for, for their email address. And then in every email that we send them, there is a link underneath every email which says unsubscribe. So people yeah. only submit the addresses themselves. And if they don't like, they unsubscribe. And many people unsubscribe. Well, not that many, approximately 5%, but still. Uh, but my advice would be learn that. Learn Facebook ads. Learn funnel, email funnel mar marketing. Again, I'm not against record labels. I had this, you know, I, I, I have had messages, people saying, why are you against labels? I'm not. I'm against bad deals, you know. But... Yeah, it's it, these two things are completely different, but I think that it's much better to be independent at first, because when mm -hmm. you become more or, or less self-sustaining, you know, then you when 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 you, you have this connection with your fans, you know, and your fans are there to support you and you give them something of value in return, you know, not just sexy photos and shout out something, but really some some value. <laughs> if you have this relationship with your fans, then you can choose, you know, then l l labels w w will come to you and you don't have to sign the first or the second or the third deal which comes your way. You, you can sit there and say, okay, we can wait forever. Yeah, <laughs> you know? completely agree with you because uh, I, I would do it exactly, if I would start a band now, I would do it exactly like you say. It's, it's quite a lot of work. But in the beginning, it's totally worth it. You, you indeed, you build uh, uh, your connection with a fan base. But also in the beginning, you are the one who works the most hard for your own band. No, no record company would do that job for you, because basically nowadays record companies they who release new bands, they just see which one works and they go on with that one. 
but they don't invest a lot of money in, in new bands. So when you are uh, at a certain level and it becomes so much work that you cannot do it yourself anymore, then it, it's worth uh, uh, considering working with a record uh, label. I would do it because they take uh, so much work on their own desk. But it, as, as every, in every uh, situation of a starting band, I, I would do it also myself. In the past, I, when, when I started with After Forever, I also did everything, uh, a lot of things myself, like I drove to the, the car, I uh, sold sometimes merchandise, I, I bought also all the merchandise myself, I did tour management, uh, so I did basically everything. When, when the other guys was, were drunk, I was still doing the, the, the payments after the show. I was driving home when people were sleeping in, the, in my car. But I did learn a lot by it. Everything uh, is exactly so the same. <laughs> Only 15 years later. <laughs> yeah, but then you learn so much by doing that. And if I would lack that, that experience, I would not understand, for example, in which situations our merchandiser ends up, our tour manager is sometimes. I understand these people because they, they get in situations that I lived myself, of course, on a different level. But you understand them. Once you do that job yourself, you understand. Because sometimes I see bands getting so pissed at their merchandiser, and then I, I, I get pissed myself because they don't understand how how hard a merchandiser is working. And then I I want to interfere, but I, I let them let it happen. But a merchandiser deserves so much respect. They sometimes eat quickly at the merch stand. And then they continue working long days, the longest days of the whole crew. Merchandise, they are golden girls and guys that uh, they do a fantastic job. <laughs> By the way, our merchandiser is Dutch. And his name Dutch. is Joost Hogenboom. Or I cannot pronounce that sur surname. Joost, if you are here, give us a hand <laughs> in the chat. I'm sure you are. Let's He's an absolutely fantastic guy. He's been with us in the most undesirable and desirable places. Joost, if you're watching this, please write something in the chat. If you are not, you can watch the, this later. But he was actually planning to. We, we keep contact. <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> he's from Leiden. Leiden? Oh, I, but I recently... can see Jeroen. Is that the same Jeroen? Because... He also ha has a friend, Jeroen, with, in whose house we stayed in, in Leiden when we were there a year, ah, year, year and a half ago. Well, he, he's not here, but he is Dutch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a great guy. Yes, that's bugging me, some, somebody writes. Sorry? How do you know when writing a song that the song feels finished and needs no more additional parts? That's a very good that's question, very actually. That's a question, actually. Yeah, I had to learn that myself because <laughs> as a perfectionist, sometimes you want to continue too long and then you, your song is perfect, actually, in hindsight, but you continue because you think you can make it even better, but then it gets worse. Nowadays, I go with my intuition. When, I feel, when it feels finished, I stop because when you go, go on too long, you make it, you destroy it again. But you have to learn it the hard way. You have to to try and try and now I know that I have to always go with my gut feeling, intuition. How do you do it? Um, well, I, I am a person who tries to develop his intuition professionally because, you know, that's what we call um, the function of the Anahata Chakra. So we think that intuition is our... Um, to put, to put it short, we have a physical body which has three dimensions, right? But we have the etheric yeah. body which has four dimensions. And the fourth dimension is linear time. While mm -hmm. the fifth dimension is the second dimension of time when time starts growing like branches of a tree and you deal with multiple probabilities, you know, in the future. Yeah. So I think of intuition as of feeling are the fourth dimension and basically just as you can stick in the third in one of the three dimensions you know for example my nose sticks here right or my hand uh, in the same way you can stick in the fourth dimension forward mm -hmm. 
it's like, you know, maybe like a cockroach with antenna who are, goes a, a lo along a forest path, but with the antenna, he's able to sense <laughs> what's ahead of him. So, yeah. so I think of intuition as this antenna which sticks quite physically in the fourth dimension and you're able yeah. to anticipate um, the events of the future and depending upon how long your antenna is <laughs> and how far it sticks into the future you're able to anticipate events which are further from you so yeah intuition is something <laughs> that you know we try to use right. a lot <laughs> But yeah, I always see it. Uh, I think it, it comes to the same thing, but I always see it in a, in a, in a different way. But it, it ends up as the same, what you were saying, uh, that with, with intuition is also like we, we use a certain amount of brain capacity, conscious, uh, our, our conscious consciousness. Uh, but there's also this unconsciousness that makes a lot of calculations every moment of the day. And it's a huge amount of calculations that we are not aware of, but it gives information to our intuition. Integral so, calculation of everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so our intuition is always by far the best outcome because that's a, a, a calculation of literally the best outcome while we consciously have only uh, limited uh, capacity of thinking. So we can think hours and hours and we come to maybe a conclusion that is worse than the split second intuition Absolutely. feeling that we had already in the beginning. Absolutely. So that's why I decided that, uh, that I always go with my, with my intuition. That's always is a big word, but as often as I can. <laughs> I think the, if you have the intuition, you should develop it. If you don't have it, you should develop it. You know, it's just yeah. the key thing here. If you relate to the subject, so if you, you know, if you go to the average Joe in the street and you tell him, what do you think about your intuition? Mm. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't always get a positive answer, you know, but if, uh, but, but if you relate to the subject, if you feel, I'm not talk, talking about you, with you, everything is clear. <laughs> yeah, no, I, no, no, I, no. I mean, people who are watching this, um, yeah. that if you relate to these subjects, if they seem logical to you which they don't to most people actually because most people just don't believe in intuition you know or um, no, no. i understand why but but when once they would know all the, the the signs behind it even then then they would maybe change their mind they just maybe they are not aware of it or it's creepy to trust your intuition more than your common sense like they say it they say i go with my common sense but i know a guy for example it takes him weeks to even decide about which TV he has to buy. He goes to all the shops and this TV has this advantage, that TV has that advantage, and he's sleepless nights. He makes a table, I, you know, model, yeah. features, tick, cross, tick, cross, that he calculates it, right? <laughs> yeah, I go to a shop and, and I have a good feeling or a bad feeling about a TV. When I have a good feeling, I take it. When I have a bad feeling, I go for another one. But within no time, I have a TV at home, and I'm still happy with my TV. But not everybody has that feeling. Or uh, have it, but some some maybe they have to uncover it. Everybody can yeah. have access yeah. to it. Yeah. It's it's a question. So what I'm saying, if this resonates with something in you, that means you have it. That means you should develop it. Yes. Yeah. And that's also that resonate is a nice word for it. Something resonates with with you or it doesn't and already when you meet a person the first three seconds or five whatever uh, you know already if that person resonates with you or not but people forgot about that now they try and try and become sometimes friends with people that they already could have known in five seconds it's not going to happen and even there's people they are together with a, in a couple with a person that they don't resonate with oh yes they already so fast people resonate together or they don't but you have to have something in your consciousness that would feel this resonance you know you know you have to yeah. have this oscillometer what, what i'm saying that not a, yeah, yeah not everybody no. re resonates to this i'm not trying to be elitistic or anything it's just it's it's a matter of fact you know 
Yeah, you have to learn to listen to to that yeah. that feeling. Yeah, it's a question. It's like training your muscles. You know, you can train your consciousness in yeah. the same way. As for me, it became so totally natural. It's it's like I, I don't know anything else than 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 this. But indeed, some for some people, it's it's completely. If they have to start it, they have to rewire their 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 <laughs> neural connections, and it takes time. But as soon as you feel comfortable with this. It becomes your 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 new way of living, and I can assure people it makes your living much easier. That's <laughs> what. That's one hundred percent. That's absolutely yeah. true. true. But ac actually, the question the guy asked was about music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we gave him the answer as well. That, that about arrangement. It, yeah. <laughs> when it was finished, and I also don't try to make songs anymore uh, as perfect as possible because I know that when I have the song as finished as I like it to be and I present it to Epica, the, the other guys, they do their stuff with it and they make things better than if I continued working for weeks on it myself. They make it better with, with their way of working. They, they add some fresh ideas. I don't want to waste any more time on things that, that are not needed anymore. So I make it as far as I think it's, it's as good as, as I can get it, and then I give it to, to the other guys. And they do their things with it, and I do it that with their songs as well. And that's how we, we work together. And on this new album, we, we worked more than ever before. Like this, we sent each other even small ideas, building it together. There's one song on, on our new album, it's, it's uh, 13 minutes, uh, yeah, 29 seconds. Yeah, I love seconds. those songs, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I wrote it together with Isaac and we were really ping-ponging this song to each other and it became longer and longer because I never intend to write a long song it just happens when it feels good I continue when I never think like it has to be 13 minutes because then you force yourself yep. it, it's not <laughs> last time <laughs> I tried to write a, a month ago I tried to write a long song well it turned out to be three and a half minutes long so, sorry, it's the song, you know, sp yeah. sp speaking, sometimes the, the song writes itself, there is nothing you can do, you know? That's what I always say, the song always writes itself, if you go with your gut feeling, because if you go against it, you, you force something that, and then you find out it, it doesn't work like that. So indeed, when I sometimes, Sita, oh, my dog is a bit, <laughs> I love when, when you, yeah, I, I've, I've been there in the past too, and I, I tried to do something and, and it didn't feel good, continued, forced myself, and you get in the end a shit song. Exactly. It never I don't works. It anymore. It never works, no. Tried that too. When, so, if, if normally the best things, they just, you know, come out sp 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 spontaneously, you know. Sometimes it happens when you are, you know, when you're like, well, one of our songs, which is very popular, popular is called Aryavarta. I wrote it when I came after a terrible day, I was extremely tired, you know, the only thing I wanted to, to do was go to, to sleep, but I just went to the keyboard and I just recorded it on my uh, voice memos on the phone and fell off to sleep. And in the morning I listened to it, that's a good tune, you know. Yeah. yeah, but that's that's fine. I sometimes even I, I wake up and then uh, Sita, Sita. <laughs> when I wake up and I have a melody in my head and I record it quickly on my on my voice uh, message, and then when I I feel inspired and I start listening to these voice messages, that's how often uh, songs started with these messages that uh, that I recorded while I was half in a sleep state. Gave me the best ideas. Yeah. And where did it come from? Nobody knows. Or nobody knows. I don't know if we your find out. Your subconscious mind, but. it has connections to yeah. a lot of places. Uh, you know. Absolutely, yes, definitely. And I also, that's another thing, that, that uh, when I don't feel inspired, I don't try to write music anymore. Because then you're sitting there and you try to force something, what you don't feel, it's there at that point. So nowadays, I only sit down writing music when I feel inspiration. You know what? I've the... been thinking of how do you catch inspiration, and I've consulted actually with our teachers about this. And the thing is that what works for me, 
that inspiration is a certain state of mind. And states of mind can be written on objects. So uh, what I started doing, I took an object. Mm -hmm. This is a necklace from stone from Nefret. Actually, Jane bought it for, for me. And whenever I feel inspiration, I put it on. And, um. and, and whenever I work with music, I put it on, you know? And if I feel it's not going, I put it off. <laughs> so so <laughs> I only put it on when it's actually coming, you know? And, yeah. and after some time, it gets charged, you know, you know, with these energies. And when I put it on, I actually get into this inspirational mood. Because, well, if you ask me, I think inspiration is are approximately the same thing as attuning you know you know your consciousness to a source of signal so it's like you can tune yeah, uh, tune a... your tv to different channels same thing yes, yes you catch a channel and you go, ooh, doo, 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 you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. and this is frequency so if you charge this thing with the right frequency you put it on that it starts in influencing your consciousness and your consciousness gets attuned to the frequency and the other thing I use for that is I photograph myself so if it if, if <laughs> you get inspiration by making a self no, no, no. if I have inspiration <laughs> I make a selfie and then when I need inspiration I meditate on that selfie to get oh. myself in that state of consciousness it it, it actually works you know? yeah everybody has a different way for me it's just when I feel the desire to write music, it works when I feel I'm, I'm forcing myself to because I have time for music and I force myself to make music. It doesn't work. So I just whenever I feel like I make music nowadays and for me, it's perfect like this. So I found my way and I, I'm always uh, there's no no time uh, or no year that I didn't have inspiration. But there's days that I don't have inspiration. But I, I just stop forcing it and I just go with the, the river, with the flow. But I have to, to go to, to eat my dinner. Oh yeah, you're actually ha yeah. half an hour late. <laughs> yeah, but it was a nice chat, so, uh, but I don't want to make my, my girl uh, pissed off at me. <laughs> I smelled already the food 15 minutes ago. So. Yeah, Mark, you, <laughs> you told me you would have, have to go at 9 and it's half past 9, so thank you so much for this conversation thank you everybody who's thank been you. here i had a good time so uh, and thanks to everybody for for watching us and i wish everybody a good day a good week a, a healthy life and hopefully uh, no much troubles with the covid situation as uh, as it will pass definitely Th good thank you mark <laughs> thank you so much thank you Bye bye. Have a have a good evening. You too. Thank <laughs> bye you guys. Bye. Thank you everybody who's been here. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye bye.